Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 34 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about bilateral filter for denoising. Again, you may have heard of it. You may have even used this either in ImageJ or other programming software, but uh, this can be a bit challenging to understand if you, uh, if you try to read the paper, original paper, which I still encourage you to do. But let me summarize the key elements of this, uh, 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 of this bilateral filter. Again, don't be intimidated by the equations. I'm gonna uh, point to the two things that are important here. First of all, how it works, it's an, uh, what it is, it's an edge preserving denoising filter. If you have a lot of edges, this can be a very good example uh, to, to use. It's much better than Gaussian denoising because it preserves edges. Now, how does it work? It replaces each pixel value at every pixel value with a weighted average of the nearby pixel value. So it's a bit like non-local means filter that we are going to talk about later on. But the key here is it replaces the pixel value, not with its immediate neighbors, you know, by looking at it, uh, immediate neighbors, just like Gaussian filter, but it looks at a weighted average of nearby pixels, okay? So it takes into account the variation of intensities meaning how fast the intensity is changing because around the edge, the intensity may change a lot, right? So it does look at this variation of intensities to preserve these edges. And how does that do that? I have a visual uh, I'll show you in a second, but these are the equations in case you wonder. Why am I showing the equation? Because look at these two parameters, sigma s and sigma r. Sigma s and sigma r control the amount of filtering, just like any other sigma in other filters, right? S stands for spatial, it controls the influence of farther away pixels. How do they influence in applying a filter at a given pixel? And sigma r is a range. It controls the influence of pixels with value that's different from the pixel intensity. Again, this can be a bit confusing, sigma s and sigma r, but visually, let me show you. If this is your input, you have like a uh, uh, some region with noise, right? This is a noisy image. We want to minimize this noise. And there is an edge right here, which means the intensity here actually went up abruptly in this example. And then you have noise in this high intense region. So our aim is to clean this image. So there are two sigmas, like I mentioned earlier. One is spatial, the other one is range. And by the way, I borrowed this uh, image from, uh, from this uh, excellent uh, uh, paper or uh, not a paper, the course notes from MIT. Okay, here is the link and uh, the PDF actually talks a lot more about bilateral filter if you're interested in understanding it uh, uh, in a, in a uh, very depth. So, but this image summarizes uh, the whole, uh, whole story. So the spatial weight is basically a Gaussian. Yeah, remember this is our Gaussian shape. And the range weight is actually based upon the range. So this is how the range weight looks like. So when you combine them, the combined filter looks somewhat like this. In fact, if you have a very large spatial weight, then the filter is almost like a Gaussian smoothing filter. Okay, that's one thing you have to keep in mind. So when you apply this, the result is going to be a smoothed image by preserving the edges. Okay, so how do we apply this? Let's actually jump into Spider and uh, as usual, copy the first couple of lines just so uh, in this case, let's actually ignore the salt and pepper. One image is enough to demonstrate this. And uh, yeah, let's actually keep our images equal to nothing but this image. So I'm just, this is, this line is, I'm copying all the pixels or all the values from image Gaussian noise to a, a variable called image. That's all it is. And I hope you know this by now because we are well into our 30th uh, tutorial or 34th uh, uh, tutorial here. So how do you apply by uh, bilateral? I recommend OpenCV. I'll talk about that in a second. But this is how you actually apply your bilateral filter. So in OpenCV, get this bilateral filter. Okay, cv2.bilateral filter. And the first argument, uh, do I have notes? Yeah, let's go ahead and copy the notes so you can see exactly what these uh, mean. The first one represents the kernel size, okay, or the diameter. And the second value here represents the sigma, they call it sigma color if you look at their, uh, if you look at their documentation. Okay, this is one of the sigmas. And the second one here, or the third one here, the 100 is the sigma space, okay? 
this is this is the spatial part again uh, going back to this example the first one the what they call sigma color is this gaussian and the second one is the range okay here so 100 defines the range 20 defines this gaussian and 5 is our uh, diameter so this is it so this is how you apply and border type is border constant again anytime you apply a filter how do you want to handle the border pixels i covered this in the last few tutorials so let's not dwell too much on that i will also show you i'm not going to execute this i'll also show you how it's actually implemented in scikit image you'll find bilateral denoising as part of scikit image dot restoration okay restoration is another module that's part of scikit image library and there you can get denoise bilateral and this is how you can apply again very similar right the first is your image uh, your numpy array the second argument is uh, your sigma color same thing here okay except their range is different i believe they are going from zero to i mean here they're going from zero to uh, 100 here they're going from zero to one so the range is very uh, similar i mean sigma color and sigma spatial is uh, again the spatial the range and uh, multi-channel uh, apparently you can actually in scikit image apply this to multi-channel images which is our color images the reason i do not want to apply this is scikit image is significantly slower compared to opencv implementation opencv is almost instantaneous and you can try it and scikit image takes almost five minutes or six minutes for the image that we are trying to do and it's extremely slow and if you automate this to thousands of images that's not a good uh, computational time i would say so i'm not going to implement that so let's go ahead and uh, plot it okay let's have a look at how the output looks like uh, and the input looks like in this case and again we are only doing open cv so let's do it it's almost instantaneous so here is the filtered image and here is the original image and as you can see the edges are very nicely preserved if you only do gaussian filtering the image will be blurred now if you want to change you know the range or if you want to change this to i don't know 40 then the image may be a bit blurred because now we are increasing the Gaussian component of this image. So the image gets a, uh, a bit more blurred when you do that. And what happens when you actually change this number? Uh, what this number, if you have a larger number, that means your larger features typically get a bit more, uh, you know, uh, blurred. I think that's, uh, let me, I've done this exercise once before. So for range distance increasing, it smooths the larger uh, features. That's pretty much it. Not blurred, but smooths the larger features if you increase this range component. Again, try this out. Bilateral filter is... Uh, an amazing filter i should say much better than gaussian for most uh, situations and it preserves edges so uh, but non-local means also is very similar and i'm also going to talk about total variation filter which also works amazingly well especially if you're dealing with uh, mri type of images non-microscopy but other forms of images where you have a lot of uh, intrinsic noise uh, uh, to begin with so let's continue this in the next tutorial and until then please keep practicing and thank you very much